not yet uh, recognized until a few years ago. So, but this is a very important disorder. In fact, in the last JNT7 guidelines of hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea was the most common etiology for secondary hypertension. And almost half of our patients in hypertension demonstrated some form of sleep apnea. This is, I know it's an unholy hour for a uh, topic on sleep because uh, we are fond of uh, taking our shares now. But uh, this is quite an interesting subject and we are fortunate to have a distinguished speaker actually. And uh, we are fortunate and we are grateful also for, for giving us this time to lecture on this rather interesting topic. So to introduce our speaker, I'll call Dr. Moreno. So the rat keep waking up until it could not sleep. What happened was the rat started shedding the 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 the, the, uh, the hair, and then the, there was a disregulation of the temperature. Eventually, the rat died. If we have volunteers here, we can do the same experiment. We will prevent you from sleeping and see what happens. Eventually, we will all sleep. It is essential. Okay. The problem with medical school is. We really haven't thought about, we haven't been thought about sleep, okay? And it is a central part of life. Everybody sleeps, okay? As you know, the opossum sleeps probably around 90 hours a day. And they notice that the smaller the animal is, the more sleep it spends, okay? So the average human sleeps around 8 hours. Interesting thing as well about dolphins. Dolphins can actually turn on and off half of the brain. Half of the brain can sleep while the other brain is awake. Okay, so it can function that way. Imagine what we can do if we can do that. No, half of the brain awake, half of the brain asleep. Just make sure you wake up that brain when you take the exam. <laughs> okay, this is from the website of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. So it is actually the youngest specialty among all the different uh, specialties of medicine. And we have body sounds, journal articles, insomnia, uh, different literatures. And during the past decade, 300% increase in the number of sleep centers and sleep specialists accredited by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. We also have our own DSM idea, classification of different sleep problems. So it's a real disease. So we have insomnia, parasomnia, these are movement disorders during sleep. Hypersomnia of central origin, not due to circadian rhythm. Sleep-related breathing disorders, sleep-related movement disorders, circadian rhythm sleep disorders, and other symptoms. The reason why pulmonologists have been interested in this is because of the sleep-related breathing disorders. Okay? In the Philippines, we have the Philippine Society of Sleep Medicine, which was just established in 2002. Okay? We are a very young society. Actually, we are under the American Medical Association, because our members are all from all walks of life, neurology, pulmonologists, neurologists, EMT, everybody who had some interest in sleep. So this is our small society. Currently we have 32 members. We started from the six members, now it's increasing in size. Okay? And this is the breakdown. So most of the members are actually pulmonologists, are the pediatric pulmonologists, Pediatric pulmonologists or adult pulmonologists is because of the sleep related breathing disorders, which we'll be talking about, and one of the major components is obstructive sleep apnea. In the Philippines, the only sleep center it used to be was St. Luke's in Makati Med, but currently there are several sleep centers all over the Philippines. Okay? The busiest one would be in Manila, and the one in Visayas and Mindanao is Chamba Hospital. Okay? So we do have a sleep center in Chamba. Let me just start first with the normal sleep. And I think it will interest you to learn a little bit about what do we do when we sleep, what is normal sleep. There are actually two major categories of sleep. Non-REM sleep and REM sleep. If you, I think you hear the band REM, rapid eye movement. When we say REM or rapid eye movement sleep, that's the time when we're sleeping. Okay? If, some, if you see somebody sleeping and they're blinking their eyes very fast, they are dreaming. 
if you wake them up at that time, they will remember their dreams. Okay? So usually, and then the, for the non REM sleep, there are four stages. Stage 1, 2, 3, and 4. Slow wave sleep is thought to be where we actually uh, get our rest, while the REM sleep is where we do our learned memories. Okay? So all stages of sleep are important. And the way that we classify sleep is based on EEG. The EEG pattern of awake, stage 1, stage 2, 3, and 4. And REM sleep are entirely different. Okay? For some reason, we all go into sleep cycles. God has made us in such a way that we go into 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then we dream. 1, 2, 3, 4, and we dream. So everybody sleeps when we go to sleep. Our everybody dreams when we go to sleep, except we just don't remember our sleep. Unless you are awakened at the time you have your REM sleep. So each of the cycles are actually 90 minutes. Okay? And then one thing that we know is there's more slow wake in the first half of the night, more REM sleep in the second half of the night, and the cycle is approximately 90 minutes. It goes back and forth. Okay? An interesting thing you guys, I think I guess interesting thing you guys is during REM there is an involuntary penal cases. Okay? So Mona the early morning must go on. Okay, actually there's a book chapter a book mama nocturnal penal cases. So if you manila and patient malpractice my loss of the little mission of the Okay, next. So why study sleep? Sleep and wakefulness are two basic processes of life with independent controls and function. They are all different. The problem with medicine is we all concentrate on the awake patient and forget that a sleeping patient is still our patient and that we need to take care of them. One state affects the other and the problem during wakefulness affects sleep and disordered sleep impair the function of wakefulness. As we say, you sleep well, you live well. So if this happens to you during the night, you know, but you wake up in the morning, you're not able to sleep, for sure in the morning you are this. In the same way as well, if you have problems during the day, most likely you will have problems going to sleep. Okay? Why do you study sleep? Some functions that are actually normal during the state of wakefulness are actually abnormal when we go to sleep. An example of this is breathing, okay? When we sleep, sleep actually impairs your cortical inputs, camera subsequent sensitivity, causing a decreased ventilatory drive. It also decreases the effect on the rest of the motor neurons and muscle contractions, 